Hello and welcome to the Magical Midlife Podcast, where you get a refreshing, uplifting and optimistic perspective on life in your 40s and 50s. I'm your host, Lindsay DeSwart, and I'm delighted that you've joined us here today. So let's jump right in. Hello, hello, it's Lindsay here. How are you doing? Today's episode is going to be a little bit more different, actually, and much as I love to uplift and inspire and motivate you through your uh, midlife time, there are days, there are just those days, and you've got to know what I mean, when you're really down on yourself, you're fed up, you're frustrated, you're angry, you're all of those lovely, good, powerful feelings that... um, we try and distract ourselves from. And quite frankly, they're a part of life, but they are definitely a part of midlife. So today I'm going to help you with some really resourceful strategies. And it's not just write your gratitudes or go and meditate. It's actually using the energy of the the anger, the frustration, the rage to do something, to do something positive, do something meaningful that's going to get you closer to where you want to be. And even what, you you know, guess what? Even if you don't know exactly where you want to be, sometimes just getting movement um, towards your new goal or towards a different direction will actually get you out of the funk that you're in. So here goes. Okay. Um, The first thing that's really, really helpful And also, can I just say, when you're down on yourself, it could be that you're frustrated about your weight. You could be frustrated in your career. You could be angry within a relationship. It could be that you're fed up with your finances. You know, those are the four things that I always talk about is your health, your finances, your relationships and your time. So you might be feeling really stressed. Those four things are absolutely my four building blocks of when one of those is off, then basically you know, everything else kind of gets thrown into a hoo-ha. So first thing that I recommend, and I've done this many, 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 many times, and especially through this, you know, more challenging time, if you stuck with me, you know, obviously I've been through some changes and challenging times. So I know about dealing with these feelings. So the first thing that I suggest is you just stick your shoes on, you get out the door, go for a walk, And it will probably end up, depending on how angry you are, it might end up being like a right old march. And if that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. You could get out for a run, but then running has cortisol issues within midlife, depending on where you are in menopause, etc. So I generally uh, recommend getting out for a walk. And the reason that you do that is, I mean, there's lots of different reasons. One, it's the fresh air. Two, it's you're actually shifting energy. Three, it's by the time you've kind of got round the block, or not even that far, depending on how your block is, um, by the time you've got round the block, you, you've got a completely different perspective on what it is you're so angry about, and your surroundings have changed, and your energy's changed, and your breathing's changed, and your daylight exposure has changed. So without even thinking about it, you can shift your energy. So first thing to do is get out for a walk because you've got power in that energy. So use it and let nature transform whatever it is that you're frustrated about. That's really the first thing. Then when you feel like you've walked it out and you've kind of calmed down a bit, you may even have broken into a run by this stage, I don't know. But by the time you've then been for the walk and you've calmed down a bit, then you can come back and, or even on your way back, you can start to think about Right. Okay. But what are the good things? And when I say what are the good things, you're looking for a change of perspective. You're not looking to, you know, have a gush of gratitudes or anything, but you are looking to get a change of perspective. And by the time you've had a walk, generally you're feeling a bit more uh, neutral. And so you can start to change your perspective. And then when you start to change your perspective, you can start to go on the other side of things. And that's all about actually finding your gratitude. So I know it might be a bit cringy to do it, but it's so helpful to start to think what you're grateful for Um, because it's got such a different vibe to it, such a different energy. So for example, there's a friend of mine who does a really, really, really tough job. There's, I, I, 
can't even think of any other job that challenges what this friend does. And so I've been dealing with some real frustration and rage recently. And my perspective shift is, but oh my goodness, what has she experienced today? (laughs) Because when I think about how angry I am about something, all of a sudden it just shifts into perspective. And it's not uh, like a feeling sorry for her because she's chosen that career. But oh my God, the challenges that she faces. And I just think, hold on a second. I'm chasing, you know, I'm facing my challenges as you will be facing your challenges. But I'm fairly sure that if you really, really think about it, the challenge that you're facing, is it going to matter in a year's time? Is it going to still be a challenge if you take action? Obviously, is it still going to be a challenge in six months down the line? It might be and it might not be. But you've got to shake up that perspective because otherwise you're never going to be able to move through what you're going through. And the thing is, and I've been listening, I've, I've, I've heard this through multiple channels recently. When we can feel the feelings we need to feel, it allows us to actually process them. And, you know, obviously I work with energy, so I can, I, I totally understand it on, um, on a mental level. And sometimes it's much easier to try and avoid the feeling that we don't want to feel. So, for example, the one Brené Brown uses is disappointment. And you're so busy trying to avoid disappointment that you actually don't jump in and do what you need to do. And so guess what that leaves you feeling? It just leaves you feeling disappointed. So that one for, you know, was just so, it just struck me right in my heart to say, well, stop avoiding. I mean, for me, it's all sorts of business things. If I put myself out there and it fails, what do I do then? Well, I'll be disappointed, but not nearly as disappointed as if I don't put myself out there in the first place. So same thing. If you try a diet or you try an exercise class, at least you tried it. And if it goes to hell in a handbasket, at least you tried it and now you know. So that's the one thing. Allow yourself to feel whatever the feeling is and stop avoiding feeling the feelings because it's the avoiding feeling the feelings is going to get you in a way worse place than actually feeling the feelings. So feel the feeling, get out and actually get moving so you are shifting the energy. Then you've got to put things in perspective. Then you can at least find some gratitude because gratitude will get your energy into a very different place. Then you can start to, once you've got to that place of neutral, that then puts you in a very different mindset, in a more resourceful mindset to start thinking, right, what is it that I actually need to do that will make a difference to whatever was the trigger for you feeling the way you were feeling in the first place? Now, I have a whole to-do list of things that I'm very happy, you know, I can easily do and you can just tick them off the list. And then there's that other to-do list, which kind of sometimes it just repeats onto the next day and then it actually falls off the next day because it's been repeated so many times because you know it's something you've got to do and you just don't want to. So now, when you've got the power of everything that you've been feeling and you've processed that feeling, use that to tackle one of those don't want to do type of jobs. It could be something just which seems so unnecessary or unimportant, but it needs doing. I mean, it can be just like emptying that, you know, rubbish kitchen drawer or getting rid of um, a bag that's been in the garage of like charity clothes that you've got to go and you know drop off. Could be going to the grocery store to pick up something that you've just been avoiding doing. I mean, that seems like a frivolous one, but whatever it is, could be actually, do you know what it could be? It could be sending an email to somebody or answering an email that you've just been putting off because you don't quite know how to do it. So just get yourself set up in a right place and think, okay, this is my bravest, most powerful version of me. How can brave me and powerful and courageous me now take on this next challenge? What am I going to do? And do it. And then I promise you, by the time you've done that, you will be feeling in such a different mindset about yourself 
that whatever that issue was right at the beginning will have transformed into a different feeling and more to the point you then will be in a state of feeling so much more resourceful that the chances are you might be able to take one more step towards what it is you've been hoping to do or wanting to do and you'll feel much better about yourself and lo and behold isn't that what we're trying to do in the first place (laughs) so I hope that helps Um, let me run through it actually in order because I think by going through all of that I kind of put it out of order a little bit so first of all obviously feeling frustrated angry rage whatever it is tune into it Um, and then the first thing I would suggest is you actually feel the feeling allow yourself to feel the feeling and take it for a walk so you take your feeling for a walk and you march you stomp you do whatever you need to do but just walk Because then you're not actually thinking, you're not allowing the feeling to be bigger than you. You're moving the feeling, you're moving the energy of the feeling, which is exactly what that sort of feeling needs. Allow it to power you. So then once you've been for your walk, and then you can get a different perspective on things. And you might need to walk for half an hour. You might need to, you might even need to walk for longer than that. But that's okay because you've got to do something with it. Because so long as you're feeling that angry and that um, enraged about something, chances are you're not going to achieve anything productive. And in fact, you may actually take other people down with you. So don't do that. That's not a good idea. Okay, so you're going out for a walk, you're feeling the feeling. And then once you've calmed down and you can see a different perspective and, you know, you've listened to the birds or you've seen something different or you may have bumped into somebody you know or whatever. But your state's changed, whether you like it or not then start to put in to perspective what it was um, that was going on. Then start to find something that was good in your day. Just find something that's good, something maybe that you're grateful for, a high point of the day. And then you can start to raise your energy, but towards the positive. Then once you've done that, you might come back to the house or to work or wherever you were. And then you've got to think about, OK, how can I use this power? How can I tune into my courageous side in order to take this next action and take that next action? One of the things that I've actually done, which I found really helpful, was because I was getting into quite a negative cycle with my phone and late night scrolling and stuff like that, which I never used to do, um, like have never, ever, ever done. And it was bringing me down more than I really recognised. So I put a phone block on. So now my phone blocks off every night at, I think, 9.30. Can't scroll on it until my alarm goes off the next morning. And by then, when my alarm goes off the next morning, I'm not going to pick up my phone and start scrolling because, you know, I've got other habits, thankfully, that overrule that. But even that made me feel so much better because I just went, you know what? I need to take decisive action. I'm going to put a phone block on. So I don't continue the negative behaviour in the future. And even that just made me feel better. It's like, OK, we're cool. Um, there's that or there's clearing out something. There's doing a job. There's replying to something. There's paying a bill. There's, you know, all the things that just niggle away at you. Get that done with the energy um, that your rage has given you. Because rage is power. It's fire, man. Okie dokes. So, look, I know this is a really different kind of energy of the podcast that I don't normally do but I just figured you know there's a bit of that energy just bubbling away and you know with full moon activities and I think we're right on a new moon actually in the next couple of days but we're in such an energy of change and shifting and clearing out the old that I had to be really real about what's going on and give you some resources that are so easy to use and so beneficial in changing your state. So look, I really hope that helps you. As always, please comment below. If it's been helpful, put it in the reviews, in the podcast reviews, because that's super helpful. And especially now that we're relaunching, I would love that and be super grateful for it. Come over and join on the Magical Midlife Facebook group if you haven't already. And I really look forward to continuing the conversation with you and maybe seeing you on the next episode. Okie dokes. Take care. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you've enjoyed the conversation, please come and leave a review. 
If you go to the Apple Podcasts app and scroll down to the bottom of the podcast page, and then you'll find the ratings and review section. Please invite your friends to come and listen by sharing the link. And you can join the conversation and let me know who you'd like to hear interviewed and what topics you'd like discussed over at Facebook on the Magical Midlife group. You can also find me on Instagram at Lindsay DeSwart, where the conversation will also continue. I can't wait to see you on the next episode. And once again, keep living your magical midlife.